Good morning all. Today I'm going to build this little electronics kit which I showed in a recent post bag and it's the eight-way antelope or was it crying babies or gazelles or something I can't remember silly translations of whatever it says on this piece of paper. Now there is another piece of paper which has a circuit diagram so we'll take a little look at that first. Now this isn't printed very well, it's very faint, but I think we can see that there are a bunch of switches here and they're feeding using this um, set of diodes, which is an encoding matrix. They're feeding this four bit bus. It looks like we've got some diodes running into a buzzer. So I think whatever pattern is entered on the bus, the buzzer will beep. That's quite interesting. I presume that only happens when a button is depressed. There's another button here and it might be the one marked rest on the board. Now is rest reset? I don't know. We'll have to have a look at the chip data sheet to see um, what the pin that this switch goes into actually does. Another bunch of diodes. Oh, that's interestingly, there's a diode from the output back to the input. That's always a novelty. There's, oh, is that a transistor? Yeah, there's a transistor here which is driving some current into that. I'm not quite sure what that's doing. We'll find out later. And then there's a, well, the chip is a seven segment decoder from four bits, I think BCD. So it doesn't decode um, hexadecimal A to F. Um, decodes into a seven segment display. So this will be nice and visual and we'll be able to see what's going on. Here's the data sheet. This um, decoder can decode zero to nine, but it looks to me from this that it only actually decodes uh, one to eight. And there's this really bizarre feedback. Well, it's not feedback. It's just a method of producing a strobe for the latch because this chip contains a latch, a decoder, and a driver for the seven segment display. Now, if you're just pressing buttons, you're not able to latch the data into the chip. So what this appears to do is it takes segment G, which is the center bar, puts that through a diode to pull up the latch signal. Uh, also segment D, uh, no D, it goes to a transistor. So D is inverted. So when D is off, you get a latch. And also segment B, it's the most bizarre arrangement in order to generate a latch. Why didn't they just have uh, four buttons to generate the code and then a separate button to actually create the latch signal? Weird, I don't know. Presumably they just wanted something where you press a button and it latches a number into the display. Very odd. So let's get building. I think I'm gonna put all these diodes in first. Let's have a close up look at these diodes. So I presume these are 1N4 and 48s. Oh yeah, there's a 48 on that second one down. So yeah, 1N4, 148s. Let's shove them all in. Today I think I'll use the 2 amp hour battery to drive this uh, display fuel level thing to drive my soldering iron. This one's not quite so good because it doesn't have the rubberized bottom. So this might slip off the desk. There's a capacitor here, 101. So that's 100 picofarads and it's there but I can't see it on the circuit diagram, so I'm going to have to try and work out where it goes. Yeah, it appears to go between pin 5, which is the latch enable, and ground. So maybe they were having a few issues with the latching arrangement. And they put a capacitor across there and ground, but it doesn't seem to show it on the diagram. It is a bit faint and faded, but maybe that was a later addition. Always put your diodes in the correct way round. So these are all pointing to the left with the black bar. This one happens to be pointing to the right. I hope they've got this correct. So I'm following that guide. Let's have a gratuitous soldering shot. I won't have too many of these. It's good to just see a little bit of smoke rising from the iron. Single sided board, of course, although it does have um, a solder resist and these, I don't know whether the um, pads are plated. They're a sort of coppery color. I don't think they're gold plated. And now a gratuitous cutting the legs off shot. Got to have one of those as well, I think. 
and I'm holding on to these so they don't fly across the room. There we are. There, look, all the diodes are in. Should we have a close-up of diodes? Let's do that. Diodes in close-up. Let's have a close-up of the solder joints on the back. Yes, I think they look okay. Now, I was just looking at these resistors and I saw the orange at the end and I thought, well, is that 10K? Brown on the right there, one, oh, oh, oh. No, that won't work. So in fact, these must read the other way. These must be orange, black, 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 which is three, zero, zero, and no more zeros. That's 300 ohms. And in fact, there are a bunch of 300 ohm resistors uh, here, which are the current limiting resistors to the seven segment display. So these are the 300 ohms. Let's get them in these positions. And no, I'm not going to measure them with a DVM to confirm their value because I trust my judgment. And if I've got it wrong, well, my punishment will be to take them all out again. I was just thinking, does this board conform to the James Sharman school of thought regarding resistor values? which is uh, you have a low value and a high value, and that's all you need. But actually, no, there's a 100K, there's a 1K. There are a lot of 10Ks around here and these 300 ohms. So we have four different values. These realist resistor legs do feel ever so spindly. I suspect they're steel. Are they? Oh yeah, they're steel. Not lovely copper, nasty steel. Now this chip also has lamp test. Uh, which is active low, and blanking, which is active low. But both of those in the circuit seem to be lamp test. Yes, is pulled up with a 10k to VCC. Don't know whether you can see that. And blanking is pulled up with a 10k to VCC. Where's lamp test? Oh, lamp test goes straight to VCC. Interesting. So yeah, they haven't implemented those functions. I think it'd be fun to to see those working. So my version of this PCB, oh, where is it? <laughs> it's over here. I'm just about to solder in the 10K resistors. My version of this would have uh, blanking and lamp test actual buttons for those, because I think it'd be fun to see them. Right, that's all the low profile components. I'm gonna fit uh, some higher profile stuff. I'm gonna put this socket in. I don't really like these uh, leaf type IC sockets. I'm a bit of an IC socket snob. I do like my turned pin, but since it's on the floor now, since that was provided, I'm going to fit it. That's the socket soldered in. Let's push the chip in. Oh, there's a little bit of splay on this, so I'll just bend the legs in ever so slightly. Yes, that's better. Put the chip into the leaf type IC socket. Now the display uh, has a few bent pins, but we can sort that out. That's no problem. Of course, there's no socket for this. Got to get this in the right way around, but there is a dot marking there, which lines up with the dot on the display. Let's put that in if the pins will go in the holes. Not very well. I think I need to straighten this out a bit. There's an electrolytic capacitor here, which is shown right across the power supply, like so. I'm going to run this off battery, so it's not going to do a lot, but it will perhaps um, help a little bit. So let's get that in. Little buzzer unit. Now I'm going to leave the sticker on because I don't want it to be too loud. There is a positive marking there, but is that the right way around? I suppose the only way to test it is to get my batteries. Is that on? Yep, that's on. Uh, put that on the negative. Put the positive on the positive. Yep, that beeps. And so the positive indicator is the right way around. Oh look, the positive side of the buzzer also has a long leg. That's often a way that positive is indicated with a long leg. Right, I need to get these switches in. Now, they need to be the right way around. The pads are almost square, but not quite. And as I remember, the way these are constructed internally is that these legs have this sort of bend on them and then they run right through the switch. So actually you should get continuity between uh, one side of that. It's a bit like a staple, the shape of a staple. You should get continuity between there, but there should be no continuity between 
the two parts there and then when you press the switch of course you will get continuity so I have a quick look at the underside of the board and you'll see that in many cases you've also got a connection across between those two legs so I'm pretty sure it will go that way around so it will go in like so I think I'm going to go for it a couple of little links here one there and one here by the buzzer which just hop over tracks uh, like across there because they couldn't root it fully which is a bit of a cop out but uh, I'm just fitting those links now okay it's finished but I've left the capacitor out because I thought that might be fun and I've also left that transistor out but I'm not sure whether that's going to work let's have a look that transistor when this segment D goes high that will pull low uh, this diode pulls the latch enable high Oh, but this resistor actually, no, that can only pull it high. I can't pull it low. So I don't know whether there's anything that can pull latch enable low. Oh, that 10K resistor does. It might still work. And without the transistor, it might work on some numbers, and not others. That'd be fun. Right, let's power it up. Uh, positive is at the top there. And let's do it unrehearsed. None of this pre-rehearsed nonsense. Pause. Neg. The transistor's not in there, as I said just for amusement. Let's power it on, see what it does. Oh, it lights up with a zero. Let's press some buttons. <laughs> it beeps with different uh, pitches. That's curious and none of the numberings are working. Rest, ah, rest or reset actually blanks the display but not using the display blanking pin, I don't think. Ah, uh, yes, it does use the display blanking pin. There's the blanking pin pulled up through a 10K to VCC. The switch pulls that down to uh, ground. So yes, that rest switch actually uh, pulls the display blanking pin down to ground, thus turning off the display. Interesting, but they don't do the lamp test. But then I suppose that would give you an eight. So maybe that's not worthwhile so clearly I'm going to need this transistor so let's put that in um, single-sided board it's going to have to be soldered otherwise it's not going to make a connection no it doesn't let's solder that in center pin one of the legs probably shouldn't short this because I've got the power on so Let's do it without shorting it and see whether that works. Ah, yes, eight. Oh. oh. We've only got eight. Perhaps if I rest. Oh, perhaps you have to do that. You do, you have to reset it between each. <laughs> this is worse than I thought. It works, but you can't just switch between no, you can't switch between the numbers. You have to reset it each time. One, reset, two, reset, three, reset, and it can't even show nine. This is weird. So I've just lifted out this 1K resistor, which is R7. Let's take at the circuit diagram, uh, if we can. So that provides segment B, which is top right segment round to the latch signal. Segment G goes round through this diode. Segment B goes through a 1K resistor and this diode. Having lifted that out, segment anything with this segment on the top right shouldn't latch. Let's try it. One, and one doesn't latch anymore, which is quite interesting. Two, two latches. Uh, three latches, four latches, because they've got this top right segment. Five, oh, that's interesting, five latches. Ah, but then is that due to this transistor, which is driven from segment D, which is the bottom segment? Possibly this is latching through the bottom segment being fed back to the latch. Uh, six, oh, that's interesting. Six reads two. What's that then? Oh. Oh, that's a glitch. That's interesting. So six latches, seven won't latch uh, because it doesn't have segment G, which is the middle bar. 
and eight does latch. Interesting. Now another thing is that this business of it, I've just lifted a component out actually, so it won't work. But this business of it um, resetting to zero whenever you press the blank circuit, that's not inherent to the chip. That's implemented by the diode logic around the chip. So when you press blank, it takes the um, latch enable low. And then when you let go, because there are diodes on some of these segments feeding that latch enable, that goes high again and it latches in zero because you're not holding any of these eight buttons. That's interesting. That's not part of the chip's logic function. So what this circuit's doing is it's using the propagation delay through the chip between the inputs and the outputs to generate the latch signal. And it takes segment G, which is the center bar, and routes it back through to the latch input. Now, of course, that goes low to high in the case of two, low to high, three, low to high, four, low to high. But of course, it happens slightly after the data is presented to the inputs, which um, is what the chip needs. It needs the latch enabled to go uh, low to high just after the data inputs are stable. And that's how this works. But of course, it doesn't work for one or seven because the center bar doesn't go low to high. And that's, that's eight, seven. And that's what this additional circuitry overcomes. It's a neat trick, but I'm just wondering whether it could be done a different way, possibly using this transistor and the capacitor that they added, the 100 puff capacitor, to create a tiny little time delay. I might look into that in another video, but uh, for this video, this is built. It works, if I put that diode back in, it would work all numbers latching and it would even work with nine because nine would also fulfill the requirements of the center bar missing. And then when nine turns on, the center bar would go low to high. So that would also work. They didn't put a ninth key on, which offends me greatly. But there it is. That's the little 4511 circuit. Cheerio.